The Tonys were supposed to have been held last night. And I think you said something to the effect of this year you were gladly taking, you gladly took breathing over a nomination. This is giving you a whole new perspective. Well, uh, things like Tony Awards and Drama Desk Awards and the Outer Critics Awards are, are lovely and a wonderful pat on the back. But this year, I'm grateful for just breathing <laughs> and yeah. being alive yeah. and being able to see my children and uh, spend time with my wife. Now, that's, that deserves an amen for sure. I mean, the family, just the perspective on what really matters. And you have such a different perspective being an actor and a singer. You said that you learn how to breathe properly, and you believe that that may be one of the reasons that you survive, that help you recover from um, this virus that attacks your respiratory, and so many people are unable to handle that clearly. It was a difficult time. My room was right near the nurse's station. So we could hear everything going on. We could hear when people needed to be intubated, when people were rushed to the ICU, when they coded. And uh, I knew that the longer I stayed in the hospital, uh, the better the chances were that that might be me. And so I knew I needed to get out of there. And so I was breathing as deep, deep as I could. Every acting class I had since the age of 14, using all those yeah. breathing techniques. Um, and whenever they hooked me up to those machines, I was breathing deep. And I was going, you know, like, see, I'm doing great, oh. aren't I? I can get out of here <laughs> you're soon, like, can I? Yeah, you're like, I'm going to break into a performance in the minute if that means that you're going to clear me to get out of here. When you hear Rob say that you're one of his heroes and you look at where the industry is right now, what do you think? How do you feel? Well, uh, first of all, I'm incredibly humbled because I think that Rob uh, hung the moon. He's one of the one of Broadway's greatest stars right now. And he's also one of the greatest, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life. Um, and people need theater. It's, it's only been around for 4,000 years, and everybody <laughs> has always claimed that it's never going to last, but it always yeah. has. You know, we know that that's a bellwether when Broadway opens up, as it was after 9-11. It's a bellwether of, of who we are. There's a reason we go to the theater, because it's, it, it is the fact that it's happening live in front of you, and it's... It's everything we're craving right now. It's the human connection. It's it's being near one another and having our lives reflected back at us by our friends and fellow peers and fellow humans. Um, and it's everything that theater is about. But we're scramblers, you know, we're scrappy. And Mrs. Doubtfire, the musical, will go right back into previews the second this, uh, this, you know, this is lifted from us. I got to ask you both about it, specifically, Rob, with Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, the choreographer, Lauren Lataro, did an interview just uh, recently and she talked about the possibility of redesigning it with social distance in mind. She took out what she referred to as clumps of performers and just kind of partnering the energy of social distance with what you do creatively. What do you think of, of the possibility of, of that happening? I think if anyone can pull it off, it's her, A. But um, I, you know, I don't think that that is how this art form is meant to operate. Doing a version of Mrs. Doubtfire where I can't hug my children at the end, I don't think is going to resonate in the way it's meant to. Um, while I do think that there's creative problem solving to be had, what we're craving is, um, is human interaction. And uh, once there's a vaccine and once the, once the fear of this thing and the statistics and the science provide the comfort of gathering, we'll be there doing what we do best.